Now I know what you guys are thinking. Lab three was amazing, but what about the best practices? Well, you're in luck. Today's lab, lab four that is, you guys are doing great, is all around best practices within processes. So today we're gonna to talk about preparation, doing the work, and actually cleaning it up for the digital worker. Remember, our digital workers love to stay busy, so we wanna give them the best accurate work to do to complete so they can keep doing more and more for us. So we're gonna cover that. Friendly reminder, once again, to read the notes before you start. There's some good little tidbits in there, especially around templates. What do you mean about templates, Corey? Templates are actually on our portal, and a lot of the stuff you'll see in labs today can actually just be downloaded so you don't have to start from scratch. Pretty neat, right? And it doesn't cost you anything. So check it out. We'll see you in lab four. And welcome back, lab four. All right, guys, so in lab four, you've read the instructions as well as the, uh, the little notes in there. And in the interactive client, we're in the processes part, so you should know where that is by now. And simply open the one called Lab 4 Process. Again, we're in Process Studio, right? So Lab 4 Process. And on our main page, it should look something like this. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to get back to our handy-dandy blocks, okay? And we're going to place a block around here, leaving a little space. And we're also going to be dragging a recover stage. Now, of course, you can drag the recover stage first before the block if you'd like. It doesn't matter. Um, and next, we're going to go ahead and change this to Lime. So today, we're really going to be talking about the best practices in Process Studio, specifically around handling exceptions and more resiliency uh, and things like that, um, and bubbling up, of course. So let's go ahead and rename our block. So we'll call this our prepare section. So you can kind of see you want to launch our, um, our website here, right? And have a record. So this is our prepare section. And from the uh, right of the, of the recovery stage over here, we're going to add an exception. So let's go ahead and drag this over here. And in this one, let's call this failed to launch. So maybe the internet was not working or you know, the website was down or crashed. And this time we're gonna go ahead and choose preserve the type and detail of this current exception. This way, uh, anytime an exception will bubble up from the launch action, right? we're gonna have that detail preserved. Okay, so we'll go ahead and click okay. And of course we need to link that together. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this font block. There we go. Okay, so you should be looking at like this humming along quite nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and prepare a couple of those same steps. So we're gonna add another recover next to search. We may need to uh, drag this down just a little bit. We're gonna wanna put another block uh, around this one. So go ahead here, and this is where we're gonna do the work, right? So we've got our prepare section and our work. So far, nothing too fancy. Now in this work area over here, you can see in the search, say there's an error. We don't simply just wanna crash or end the process there. We maybe wanna introduce a retry loop, right? We also don't want the digital worker continuously looping in cycles all day long. That would be very boring and a waste of time. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, add some retry loops to this. So here we've got a data item, search for DOW, that's stock ticker right here. And we're gonna go ahead and add a few more. So add two data items right down here below. And let's open up the first one and we'll do this as retry count. And we're going to this time instead of text like we did in previous labs, we're gonna put number, okay? And we'll set the initial value for this one, the retry count, at zero. Makes sense? Yep. And then the second one over here, we're going to do retry limit. Now, obviously, we want to set a limit to this, so we'll also choose uh, number, and then we'll put three. So three times. If it's not working then, then we can have the digital worker go move on to other items, right? And we'll add one more block around this. And we'll call this one data items, obviously, because this is where our data items are located. Okay, now we're gonna need to do a little bit of spacing work here. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this down a little more and I'm gonna grab this block down here. And we wanna enter here is a anchor. So anchors really don't do anything, but they really help with organization part over here, keeping this kind of tidy. Um, especially as you build a lot more complex or, or deeper automations, if you will. 
Now to the right of this recover to stage, we're gonna add a decision stage. This is the first time we're kind of encountering a decision stage. Looks like this one right here in all its glory. So let's double click this and we're going to basically say, should we retry this question mark? Um, and now under this expression builder right here, this is where we're going to basically take our numbers. So we wanna say this is just some very basic simple math is our retry count, if I can drag today, apparently I can't, retry count is less than the retry limit, okay? So there it is, all we're saying, if this number is less than this, then proceed in a certain direction. Now, of course, if you wanted to do a check, you could hit validate and just say, okay, is this expression? It's a good little way to test that. And there's some other really neat functions in here as you go deeper in the labs uh, and training that I highly encourage, especially if you ever want to convert, say, you know, numbers to text or text to numbers, that kind of thing. A lot of great stuff in here, again, to really just remove that, that coding functionality that you don't need for Blue Prism. Um, so highly recommend uh, exploring a little more there once you get through the labs. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit OK. And we should be looking like this. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to add another exception to the right of retry, okay? And let's say that there was a search exception. And again, we'll hit preserve that detail right there. And now we're going to add a calculation stage because we want to increase this count number every time. Makes sense, yep. So we'll go ahead in here and we'll just call this one count, right? So what we wanna basically do is that retry count, every time it passes it, we just wanna add a one. Think of like a tally. And if you're going around the Monopoly board, for those, for those that know that board game, right? Every time you pass go, getting $200. This time we're just adding one to that count number. Easy breezy, okay? And where do we wanna store that is we wanna put it in the limit. So we need to know if we've hit that limit or not, right? Okay, so go ahead and hit okay. And now we need to just simply do some linking. So we'll go recover over here, whoops. We need to click our link button there. There is an F uh, shortcut over here that they have in the notes if you wanna use your keyboard there. Uh, recover there too, and then do we wanna retry it? We can say yes. And the second one is always no. So let me just show you real fast there. So this says no, this says yes. If you can see right here, if you ever need to switch those, you can right click and click switch. Now the yes would be an exception, but uh, we don't want that for this one. So make sure your yes is going up, okay? So not too bad. Um, now what we really need to do is have a resume stage because if we're counting, we wanna do, whoops, not recover, resume, Corey. There we go. And it should look like this, right? This will basically exit the recovery mode and we're gonna continue on with that cool process. So let's go ahead um, and do some more linking. So we'll link this to this, this to this. And so far you should look like this and I will need, definitely need to link this over here. And then if you're a perfectionist, you can like me, you want to move this up and you should be looking nice and neat just like this. Now, the last part of this is to simply do some cleanup. So we're gonna move this end stage down here and we are going to drag an action stage like so. Mm -hmm. And this time we're going to choose close from the answer three, so we'll call this close. And we're gonna call, scroll down. Lab three object, there it is, close. See, it already knew exactly what I wanted to do. And we'll hit okay. And you should maybe bring this down just a little bit. And we're gonna introduce another block in case there was an error or anything that we can bubble up there. Call this one close. And let's do this one as orange. Oh yes, excellent. Okay, so other than that, of course we need to finish our linking there. And now this is our lab four. So again, if you remember back in our objects, we were doing verify, do, confirm. Now here we're doing is prepare, work, close. This right here is really where you get into resiliency, right? And this is why it's so important and this isn't screen scraping or just a simple automation. This is the digital worker being able to do the work it really needs to do. And if something's not there, like I said, maybe your internet is slow that day or maybe it's freezing or a website has crashed. Again, we can you know retry it 
right, without doing a loop, and then we have a limit ticker on there. So go around and uh, try this out. You can hit play and see this run. You can speed it up if you want, which or slow it down. We can talk a little about that later in um, some of the some of the uh, upcoming labs. And by the way, you do want to have your browser closed because you're going to have a launch action right here. So before you run it, uh, I'd hit the reset and make sure your internet browser is closed and uh, have fun. Uh, by the way, friendly reminder again, I hope you guys aren't annoyed by me saying it, but there were some really good tips in italicized font in this uh, document there. So I highly uh, recommend that you uh, check those out. So we'll turn it over to the, uh, the wrap up and we'll see you on the next lab. Thanks guys.